How are this and this the same picture, but also not quite? Let me explain. You have to understand the subtle yet crucial differences between magnification and resolution first. What I want to draw your attention to though is this guy right here, resolution. Since we've discussed magnification and its calculations in more depth in a previous video, watching this video in 360p is not the same as 1080p, so you guys are no strangers to the term resolution. Other than ruining your illegally streamed movie quality, low resolution causes a problem when you deal with microscopes actually, but we'll get to that in a bit. Hold up. Why is resolution defined as the ability to distinguish between two separate points when we're talking about microscopes? Let's go back to our original picture, shall we? In the much clearer image, or more appropriately, one with a higher resolution, we can see the two dots is separate. But what happens the moment we stream with terrible internet and lower resolution? Boom. The two dots we could distinguish as two now look like one singular dot. Higher resolution means clearer image, and we're able to distinguish between the two close but separate points. Some of y'alls in the back are probably thinking, can't we just up the magnification? I mean, you know, just zoom in more. Take your smartphone as the simplest example. Well, at least if you're broke enough to use a budget to mid-range Android like me, where the more you zoom in, the more you... <sighs> the more you wish you weren't so broke. Anyways, higher magnification does not equal to higher resolution. Understood. Just like the cheap Android phones we use, light microscopes have a max resolution of 200 nanometers, which is the problem we actually want to tackle. By 200 nanometers, we mean that if two objects or points are closer than 200 nanometers, we wouldn't be able to tell them apart. You can take these two micrographs. I don't know about you, but if I weren't so broke, I know which micrograph I'd want to observe. But coming back to our lovely light microscopes, where light is used to VR tiny samples. And as you might or might not know, light actually travels in waves. The wavelengths of the visible light we all see ranges from 400 to 700 nanometers. And what our magnificent brain does is interpret these different wavelengths as colors. So we can see the beautiful colors in our breathtaking nature. And racism. 400 nanometers being the shortest is viewed as violet. This transitions to the 700 nanometer mark, which is seen as red. Don't ask me where black is. Anyways, just like the racists, we aren't seeing the bigger picture. Visible light is actually a small part of the entire electromagnetic spectrum, if you haven't noticed. So theoretically, 400 nanometers isn't the limit. There's technically no limit to how short or long a wave can be, and that's a crucial detail we'll get to in a while. But also keep in mind that the wavelength changes with energy. The more energy the wave has, aka the more hyper it is, the shorter its wavelength and vice versa. Their speed is unaffected, just their wavelength and frequency changes. This is actually a specimen viewed with a light microscope with the light appropriately represented by the waves, you know, to make things clearer. The wavelength is 400 nanometers because that's the shortest wavelength in visible light, again because we're using a light microscope. Now this huge ball, oh wait, it's a mitochondria, eh. It's a thousand nanometers and obviously interferes with our light waves, yay. The smaller ribosomes are having a much harder time being noticed though, story of my life. This brings us to something we call the limit of resolution. It's literally just half the wavelength of radiation used to view a specimen. Our light microscopes, for example, use light as a source of radiation. The shortest wavelength of light is 400 nanometers. Our limit of resolution is therefore half of that, which brings us to... Uh, um, uh, right, exactly 200 nanometers. And if you're wondering why, we stain some biological structures because the object is transparent, allowing light waves to pass through it. So we gotta stain them in order to see them. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, how in the world do we view these specimens smaller than 200 nanometers? Aha, uh -huh, yes, you that didn't raise your hand up. Exactly, it's simple. Just use radiation with a shorter wavelength than visible light. Okay, so just use UV or X-rays for example, right? They are excellent candidates, but according to my buddy Ronald Fisher here, it's not that straightforward. Enter electron microscopes. These astronomically massive and expensive contraptions. Yes, they use electrons as a source of radiation, but like, why electrons? We know that electrons are negatively charged subatomic particles which orbit an atom's nucleus. But how do they end up in the microscopy picture? Here's the juicy part. When a metal is heated, some of its electrons gain so much energy that they exit their orbits and just go brazy. These free electrons have a ton of energy, and hence super short wavelengths, right? This is one of the two reasons they're really suited for this job. The wavelengths are as short as X-rays, but that's not all. The better part is that since they're negatively charged, they can be focused using an electromagnet. You know how light can be focused with a magnifying glass or just glass lenses in general? We can use magnets, or better yet, electromagnets to do the same with electrons. A super short wavelength provides us with a resolution that is 400 times better than that of light microscopes, or an astonishing 0.5 nanometers. That is a staggering number if you know how small we're talking about. 
Apologies. I mean how average we're talking about. And no, you don't need to know how the electron microscope works for your syllabus. Funny enough, the resolution can vary, but that's because there are two main types of electron microscopes. Scanning and transmission electron microscopes. I've hinted that I like scanning electron microscopes more in a previous video, so I guess you'll finally find out why. Let's get transmission electron microscopes, TM for short, out of the way first. These were originally developed before SEMs, and while keeping it simple, what happens is an electron beam is passed through the specimen before being viewed. Only the electrons that pass through the specimen are seen, enabling us to see inside the cells. The one reason I think SEMs are cooler than TEMs is that with SEMs, the surface of the specimen can be seen. This is because the electron beam is used to scan the surfaces of structures, and only the reflected beam is projected and observed. Long story short, you can obtain a 3D image. I mean, look at this, and this, and this, and this. You get the idea. How do you not find that cool? The swag does come at a price though, but a fair price in my eyes. And that's because SEMs have a lower resolution of about 3 to 20 nanometers compared to TEMs. Four key things you want to know about electron microscopes before your attention span gives in. First is that the original image is actually in black and white. Not the most exciting, I know, but it's not too bad because a stain is used to increase contrast and thus more densely stained parts appear darker, still giving it depth and a nice look, not gonna lie. An alternative is false color, as we see here and here, where the computer is used to color standard black and white images. Everything from the specimen, electron beam, and even the fluorescent is kept in a vacuum. This is because even air particles can interfere and collide with the electrons, causing them to scatter. Lastly, the specimens viewed actually need to be dehydrated, because when the water in them evaporates, the whole air particle problem arises again. So although efforts are made to try and preserve the specimens in a lifelike state, only dead and non-living specimens can be examined due to this dehydration. Want to know what else is dehydrated? My mouth, bro. And that concludes chapter 1. Bye is the best science, no debate. Peace and assalamu alaikum.